So, um, I'm Christian Meisters. Um, I'm working in Mainz, Germany. I'd like to talk a little bit about um, the contributions um, and uh, the question design uh, for the eventual uh, examinations to take place. Um, and I cannot switch slides. Oh, gosh. That's really annoying. I don't allow that I'm here. So my, my menu is completely frozen. That's really weird. So I just revoke this allowance and so there are some remarks on the set. Christian, can, can you move the mouse pointer at least on it or does yeah, it Yeah, do you see that? Yes, we see yeah. that. I think I just crashed that and perhaps re-allow. I don't, don't know, so. Do you see the next slide now? I need a yes or no. Yep, we see it, I see it. Yeah, cool, cool, okay. So, just briefly about me. Um, I'm a non-computational, uh, non-computer scientist, I, I um, work with a tire two or two and three cluster as a life science contact. So this talk now is about the certification strategy, a little bit about designing questions and eventually about contributing back. Uh, talking about our raised expectations, Veronica, I hope that I can answer a few of your questions, but Lev and Brian, we are still in the development phase as you might have recognized. So when talking about users of HPC CF, I think we have to distinguish the, the lecturer and the actual examinee part. Um, uh, Julian is uh, quite good at, uh, at uh, defining the lingo here. Uh, I tend to mingle this up. So uh, I hope you don't mind. There are different tiers in uh, HPC in the HPC so community. Uh, yesterday, no, two days ago, we had, um, contributions from Stuttgart, so tier one system. Uh, they, they mainly focus on development simulations and running them. Uh, I think the, the further you go down into uh, the, uh, I have to have to shut down my, my son, who's next to me, uh, <laughs> the, the tier two, uh, tier three um, uh, part, the more, uh, away you move from the uh, traditional HPC part to the high throughput multitask part where because uh, you have a quite uh, diverse zoo of computing applications. Also there are different views um, apparently uh, whether you are actually lecturer or actually a site manager, the site manager for, for most uh, of the lower tier systems uh, teaching is rather necessary because teachers don't run the system uh, and resources are limited. You can't hire too many teachers. This is, of course, slightly exaggerated. Uh, a newbie might just want to run certain applications. Uh, will need an introductory course, but not always visit them. That's at least my experience. Uh, perhaps a, a prior scripting course introduction is uh, required. And what they are only interested in is running their workflows, something tailored to the need to just press the button and run. And of course, this is not the way uh, HPC works. Brian uh, talked at uh, length about it. Um, so what's the plus if you, uh, as a site, adopt HPC CF and perhaps cross-link the skill sets uh, or the primary skills here. Well, newbies, they will broaden their horizon. They see you on your course announcements. What else is in the portfolio? Um, maybe they think they, that other courses are also something of interest to, to them. And perhaps um, they will realize then when applying elsewhere, 
to have something else in the portfolio, it might help them. Um, advanced coders, perhaps for the uh, US or Australian part, I should have included a plane here. Um, advanced coders, they will know their topics, they will care to travel if they want to educate themselves, and they will rarely need introductory courses. Still, if you have a course uh, portfolio, uh, which you display on your website, uh, perhaps with courses in your vicinity, um, they also will uh, gain from the increased um, increased transparency, even though they probably are aware of uh, let's say praise or under other national and international content providers. HPC CF is certainly something for us as lecturers uh, because we gain from the better objective transparency because it's better to be displayed for uh, potential um, course followers or examinees. Um, the feedback we want to provide two teachers, two lecturers, uh, will also um, give them a measure to uh, uh, estimate their course quality, whether or not the students pass or how well. Plus, um, I personally have learned that if I display uh, HPC CF in some of the introductory slides, that's something telling students that I didn't conceive all the content by myself, but that other people around the world actually share the need uh, for that particular content. Okay, when conceiving a certification strategy, we have to have these different minds uh, or views in our mind. Now, onto the certification strategy, just briefly. Uh, when selecting questions, we select them randomly from a pool of questions. That is at least the intent. The pool in itself might be a bundle of sub-branches in the skill tree such that it's not too sparse on just one specific um, leaf in the skill tree. And each question in turn might have a number of right and wrong answers in case of multiple choice questions, which is then in turn randomly selected. That means that all the examinations will be based on a slightly different set of questions. Um, that by itself provides a light measure uh, uh, on cheating prevention because uh, examinees are presented by random questions such that not a perfect preparation on a certain question set can be accomplished. Um, there it will be a time limit per question, and we require a registration prior to a test session. Uh, even though there is no ID check or something like that, um, we are pretty sure that we have raised awareness then uh, when a test is taking place, um, and people totally want to cheat. Um, we will, we will also, also boost, boost uh, the uh, acceptance. Sorry, yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I thought there was some some feedback. I I thought uh, that if uh, a PI wants to hire a certain scientist and uh, the work involves in turn involves uh, HPC working with an HPC cluster, um, waiving an HPC CF certificate, which is then uh, uh, fitting this this. Uh, uh, particular um, uh, uh, request uh, is certainly an asset. So when talking about uh, uh, the design of questions uh, for the HPC certification forum, um, I uh, confess that some examples here are inspired by Greg Wilson's book. Greg Wilson perhaps is known as the initiator of the Carpentries uh, community. Um, some of the ideas here are based also on my own experience, some on other sources. Well, uh, before we dive into that, uh, we should uh, be clear about that a question can be asked with a certain aim and also that courses uh, cover a different set of uh, knowledge or skill sets uh, and henceforth questions need to be designed and chosen with a certain care. So I, while the popular um, type of question when 
talking about e-learning are certainly multiple choice questions. And we ought to ask ourselves, when are they the most suitable? When I give you an example, suppose you're teaching young children and you give them this multiple choice question, uh, which is certainly never taking place, but nevertheless, nonetheless. So we ask them to tell what is uh, 33 plus 15, and we are happy if the, they show the correct answer. However, if the answer is wrong, we might get more information for us as, our, uh, as teachers, as lecturers. Uh, just to give you an example, if the answer is 42, the child, she might not have understood correctly what carrying over actually means. Um, and we can translate such a framework to young, from young uh, to, to newbies, let's say to the Slurm batch system. Um, <clears throat> We think of a cluster with 20 core nodes only. Then if you submit a job with the following parameters, slim parameters, uh, 20 tasks, each task takes two CPUs. Uh, what's the number of reserved nodes? Then two would be the correct answer. And I suppose for everyone here listening, um, that is easy to grasp and perhaps too easy, but for my understanding when uh, people uh, follow followed a introductory course, it's perhaps a little bit um, challenging. And if they come up with, let's say, answer D, that you cannot answer this question because you didn't specify the capital N flag, then we know the user did not necessarily understand the concept. So what else is there in the arsenal? Free text isn't everything. Um, there is uh, MCQs on everything. There's free text that can be short and explicit, filling in blanks for, let's say, you ask uh, for code questions. We can talk about Parsons problem. They can also be technically implemented as multiple choice questions. I'm gonna show you in a minute. Uh, we can trace code when we talk about programming courses and so forth and so forth. Now, now um, filling blanks is um, a technical variation on free text. It's more specific and we avoid the screen, blank screen of horror um, issue um, while we can actually test for specific vocabulary or knowledge. Let's say we have an introductory Linux course, a uh, bash course, then we have this snippet here and we could ask what should be filled in here in this blank. And the answer is a single token and henceforth it can be uh, automatically graded rather easily. A Parsons problem too avoids the blank screen of horror question. Let's say you want to, uh, the, the examinee to concentrate on control flow of a program, then in real life you can uh, display longer tasks, task blocks or code blocks, which should be uh, arranged or rearranged. But here I have a rather small snippet in order now to get this code working, summing up numbers, you have to rearrange this code. And the answer can be, for instance, free text. And um, this can also be easily passed and checked. Now, we came up with a number of questions by ourselves, but in order to encourage the community, uh, Julian scripted something uh, rather neat, uh, such that everyone now can contribute a proposal for a certain examination question uh, when browsing to our wiki. And uh, Julie and Veronica um, raised our intention that we have to provide more information and uh, on our wiki and we are certainly working on that in uh, due time. Each of the wiki pages contains a link, as I said. The little form so far is asking for contact main. You should select uh, a learning objective from a pre-formatted list. You can supply a question you have thought of and in case of a multiple choice question, the possible answers. Then, uh, an evaluation uh, process will start for each submitted question um, such that we apply certain rigor. Can the, uh, is the uh, question actually leading to a certain answer? Can the question be answered? And if approved, the question will be perhaps reformatted and merged into the pool of questions 
uh, of the chosen topic and skill set. Um, in the end, there hopefully we will be um, multiple choice tests online or rest, well, rather perhaps amended with a certain other type of questions, which is then a combination technically of JavaScript and a script and a web service. The system, as I said, selects randomly a number uh, of questions uh, from a pool. And in case um, um, sufficient answers are answered, then, well, uh, provided then choices are submitted by the web server. There is a manual approval of the results so far, um, and then a certificate will be issued um, such that the examinee will have a permanent computer verifiable proof. Um, there are certain measures to ensure privacy. We only uh, uh, need a minimal set of information, such as, for instance, the uh, email address to send the um, certificate, and of course, uh, summarize statistics such that we can actually provide feedback to the lecturer. Um, yeah, and that is in essence what the uh, successful examinee will receive. A, a uh, certificate PDF, of course, a uh, slightly different layout um, or, or uh, proportions here, and then um, a text message which will actually then serve as a uh, proof that the examinee actually succeeded. With that, I thank you for your attention, and I hope there is a number of questions. I will just go into the chat. Perhaps uh, some people already commented. Wonderful. There have been primarily remarks uh, regarding your questions. Yeah, Brian did some of the Yes, Brian has something. That's all I saw. Um, Brian, so the first one Brian, was build down period for. Wonderful. Go go ahead. I just want to read the question. Someone read, needs to read yeah, the question. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. What's the Shall I just down period for repeats of taking the exam? And I'm not entirely sure that we have decided about it, Julian, did we? Uh, so the initial thought was something like two weeks, um, but uh, that was just something that lay on the floor, so to speak. It, two weeks is reasonable because it gives the people enough time to really cool down and remember and, you know, revisit some of the training material, but at the same time, it is close enough that they don't forget to take the exam again. And uh, maybe I can paraphrase the, the second question. Uh, what measures do you have in place to yeah, exactly. sort of control brute force attempts to get the certification? And I'm not sure if it was mentioned what the actual threshold is to qualify for the certification, if it's like a 50% pass rate or a 90% or whatever. Um, I'm not sure. Um, so so far, we haven't have uh, uh, released a, a, a certification exam already. Um, uh, <coughs> sorry, I need to I need to drink something. Um, so the point is, um, in, in my personal view, I think we need to wait questions uh, for their for their difficulty and eventually come up with numbers per exam, because obviously um, a, a certain set of easy questions for Linux introductory course, that's something different than uh, uh, only a half a dozen questions for an MPI course, which take longer to answer per question. Um, so that needs to be decided on a, on a case base. Yeah, we, we again, we discussed for, for a pass rate, we discussed something like 70% um, of the questions must be uh, correctly answered. And we had at least some discussion with various people that said, you know, 70 is too high. Some other people said uh, it's, it's too low and so on. But the end, that was the discussion we had last year. Um, the consensus was that 70 seems right at the moment, but it's exactly as Christian says, there is not yet an exam. So we don't know exactly um, 
And in terms of brute forcing, so when you register, you have to give your email address and your name because the name will be printed on the um, exam, right? So if you want to brute force, right? Uh, yeah, you could register using 10 emails, for example, right? Uh, different emails, but we would still check that the name is pretty much uh, unique in that sense for the short period for a short period of time that it is inside the database um, and in that sense uh, you cannot just use different uh, email addresses yes you could use a different name but then the question is what how much worth is the certificate at the end so that's regarding good forcing and Lev raised the hand, I think, Christian. So Lev. Yes. Uh, well, I, I think ultimately the part, the um, the threshold mark will depend on the difficulty of the exams that we come out with. Um, but it, it, I do find the idea that people might try to brute force or something to be so strange um, because. What benefit does it give them? I mean, they'll, they'll have um, access, they'll, you know, they'll be able to so like, um, say, yes, I'm certified at this particular level of competency to use an HPC system. And when they actually get onto the system, they won't know what they're doing. <laughs> um, so we found out fairly quickly. Um, yeah. it, 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 I find the idea that somebody would actually, you know, have something which is, um, just so like you know, an indication of a skill level and a self-efficiency level um, may want to actually brute force. It would be sort of counterproductive for them, but it would actually. I mean, there is a degree which it would actually be a waste of so like um, systems administrators' times, and it also would reduce um, the um, the perception of the quality of the examination process if it was available. So we do have to protect ourselves against so like such things. Yeah, uh, maybe I should just clarify that, um, you know, we, we do struggle with people that uh, CV or resume builders, they just want these certifications that so they can apply for a job. So yes, I agree, a user may not benefit, but if someone's, let's say we go the sysadmin route, and they start listing all these certifications that they've achieved to prove their credibility as an, as, as an admin to get a job. But that might be a unique challenge to what we have. But yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, right. I, I, f I fully agree with Lev. Um, there are actually, well, I, the administrator in me, that he will also see uh, who's submitting jobs and, and is it actually well, um, are they well defined and is uh, the f job performance uh, well uh, above a certain threshold and what's the user experience and also from the tickets we get back. Um, we do have a, a certain idea as administrators. However, um, I remember a case where um, a student actually took a course uh, uh, at me, uh, by me, uh, delivered by me, and um, only a few weeks uh, later, uh, he left for post at Davis uh, in California, and I s I've seen at his CV that uh, he is, uh, that he claims to have a certain HVC proficiency. And I do know that he hasn't got it. Um, so that is certainly an issue, yeah. Uh, Brian, I, I concur with you there that we have to have some measures in place that it's not too easy to get a certificate. Yeah, also I think it's about trust, right? I mean, we want to really make it recognized uh, by stakeholders and if people say you can brute force it too easy, what is it worth then, right? Um, so. We, we will have some measures, but ultimately we discussed, I mean, if you want to cheat, right? I mean, if someone wants to cheat, they can always cheat. They can create, for example, fake IDs if they want it. So there is no level of checks that ensure this. And one level of trust that we, um, have, we, are, we have been building is that we said we want to create this kind of short test that uh, a potential employer can create. So you come to me and you say you have those 10 skills, no problem. Let me put those 10 skills on this web page and I generate a couple of random questions, so to speak. And then the system tells you, oh, it's very high likely that you have the skill, right? Because you just demonstrated in five minutes that you could answer those questions. If you cannot do it, well, like yeah. you don't have the skill. Right, Christian? That is, you, you put it on the slides again? Absolutely, I, con I concur, yeah. 
there was a question here from Marc André uh, about the requirement which name is to be entered for the certificate. And uh, obviously, it's in the self answers on the one taking the exam to have uh, 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 officially recognized uh, name there and not some artist's name or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm reading Brian's uh, notice there. Yeah. And I can imagine, I can imagine that you're uh, right there. There was a brief discussion here between Julian and Kenneth. Um, I think that was on the Slurm slide here, and it just occurred to me perhaps it was too easily phrased, but, but it's just serving as an example. Uh, if you'd like to comment on that, please proceed. Otherwise, I think uh, the question I, might I, be I really already. enjoyed your example so much, Christian, I can't tell you. With these potential um, errors that you indicated that people may have misconceptions and related, I really think it's great. We should put it actually up. I think we expanded with some of these uh, comments that we got from Kenneth, for example, and we, we put it up as an example how those questions can be built, you know, uh, as part of this introduction that we make probably to this online submission tool to, to give people an idea. Yeah, we already discussed this uh, two days ago, and it's certainly on our to-do list, I, I can tell you. Uh, I took notes, you took notes, uh, Julian, and uh, yeah, the, the Slurm example perhaps is also uh, depending on the cluster configuration, um, what, what administrators uh, have as defaults there uh, in their Slurm config, but nevertheless, I think uh, the concept is still valid. Yeah. Oh, sorry. All right. Uh, so now we have still some time left for some generic discussion if there is still a need to discuss anything. Um, from my perspective, this was a wonderful uh, workshop again. And I will put up the videos shortly after. So is there anything else to discuss, questions or critical things? Anyone else from the HPC certification from wants to say something? Veronica? Yes, um, I'll add, add a couple of things. So please do keep in mind that for the certification to work, it needs to be a community effort. So we need as many people involved as possible, both to look through the skill definition and potentially find, identify any gaps that might be there, but also from the, the perspective of adopting um, and you know contributing the, the questions to the examination and just uh, tagging you training materials and so on. There are many, many things that still need to be done. So if you're interested in contributing even a small amount of your time, or if you know someone who would be interested, please let them know, uh, join our Slack, join our meeting and um, help us make it work. <laughs>